Next up, I want to talk about the finally method that was added to the promise object. So promises have been around for a little while in JavaScript. More recently, they added a finally method. So if you have a promise like I've, the one I've got right here, let me zoom in a little bit more here. With the promise, we have a resolve and a reject method. In my promise, I am just randomly going to either resolve or reject. So sometimes the then method will run, sometimes the catch method will run. In my promise here, you can say p dot then. So here's the function that's going to run if it works. And let's just pass whatever the result of the resolve. If I could write console, that would help. There we go, console.log. And in catch, we're also going to do console.log. So I'm going to get one of these two results. It's either going to come back and say good things or bad things, just based on the value of that random number. OK, so if I run this, there's bad things. Run it again. Good, 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 bad, good, bad, and so on like that. So OK, fine. We've got resolve and reject. So one of these two things is going to happen. However, with finally, what we can now do, and I'm just going to space this out a little bit differently. There we go. We can add another method right here. And this one is going to run regardless of which of these happened. So if you've got some sort of process that you need to do to clean things up or reset something, this is a perfect place to do that. We can put a message inside of here. Okay, so finally it's going to run a function and inside of that we'll say console.log Okay, so there's the message I'm going to write out. Now it doesn't matter if good things or bad things happened, I will always get this. So we'll clear this out, run it again. Good things. Good things. Good things. How many good? There we go. There's a bad. All right. So we can see that regardless of whether resolve or reject gets called, we get this finally method happening. So practical example of this. I've got a page here built. And what I'm going to do is on this page, when I click a button, I'm going to do a fetch. And then when the fetch comes back, I'm going to clean up the page. So my fetch method here, I call prevent default just in case this is inside of a form or something. Show loading. I'm going to run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the button. I'm going to add an overlay and I'm going to add a little loader animation onto there. That's what this is doing. Once that's done, we move on to the next line of code here. We're going to do a fetch to this URL. Now, this is always going to work unless I've got some sort of network error. So I could disconnect and we can see this happening. So we're doing a fetch. We get the result back. It's going to be JSON. We do that conversion. Then we're going to show the content. But if this conversion failed or the fetch itself failed, it's going to go down to the catch. And I've got a function called fail. So I'll just scroll down here a little bit. Here's my fail function. So all I'm doing is I'm writing stuff out in the console for both of these things. I don't have to do anything on the page. But here's the one where everything worked. We got our data. Here's the one where things failed. But regardless of which of these two methods ended up being called, I have my finally method, which is going to be called as well. And what it's going to do is it will re-enable my button. So change it from disabled true to disabled false. Then. I'm going to hide the overlay. I'm going to remove the overlay from the page. So let's jump over to the browser and take a look at this in, in action. OK, here's the page. When I click on the button, it's going to do a fetch call. And when the result comes back, boom, the overlay is gone and the button is back to being not disabled. And right now I've got this throttled. I've got it on slow 3G. If I leave it fully online, we do this. You can see it happens really, really fast. You can just barely make out this is happening. And that's why I was doing the throttling. But if I change this to offline, now it should fail entirely. So the catch happens. And because it's offline, that's happening instantaneously. I'm never seeing the overlay. But 
I was still adding the overlay to the page. If I come in here to the body, if I go to one of the three G's, if we watch inside the body right here, when I click on the button, you can see that that div does get added and removed. If I go offline, come back, watching inside the body here again, yeah, it's hard to see. Um, but the div is being added because in the code, when I click the button, the first thing that happens is I do this, show loading. If I were to put all of this inside of a function that's delayed, so let's say we do a set timeout, and we will create an arrow function that calls it after one second. There we go, like that. So all of this code here is going to run after a one second delay. Let's go back online again, refresh, there we are, click the button, it works. If we go offline now, there we go, and there's a one second delay before the failure takes place. And so that's just a real practical example of what you can do with the promise finally method. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and as always, Thanks for watching.